Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I'm an awful garbage, filthy mouse, so viewer discretion is advised, but if you're not into that or weird shit in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our time fondly. Y'all, hi. I, I know this video is a little bit late. I know, I know. Today we're gonna be talking about the Yucca palette. I wanna say Yucca. Yucca just sounds nicer. <laughs> But I had a lot of people in my comments during makeup bingo, like, it's pronounced yucca? And I appreciate it, thank you. But, um, yucca just sounds better. Oh my god. Yucca just rolls off the tongue. Anyway, this is the new Natasha Denona palette. Oof, I have been playing with it for a little bit now. But in today's video, I'm going to show you two different eye looks. And I'm going to give you my overall thoughts about this palette because, you know, you know me. You know Natasha Denona. We don't get along quite well. And, um, not because I don't want to. It's just because the brand's formula doesn't like me. <laughs> And usually I have a lot of trials and tribulations with their collections and I'm just really hoping that this is going to be a home run. So let me tell you a little bit more about this palette. The Yucca palette, see I said Yucca, not Yucca, retails for $69. A set of 15 new fiery shades in an exquisite palette that synergistically merges Natasha's three daring formulas of sparkling foiled, matte, and metallic. So normally I would have swatches and stuff. My arms are covered in eczema. I blame my job. <laughs> You know, stress. Um, so I don't want to swatch metallic or foil sheets on top of eczema because that just is, that's just gross. It's just gross. So I'm sure you've seen a bunch of other videos and in those videos they have swatches. Go refer to them. Go refer, go my babies, go forth, look at those swatches. But to me also, swatches, they tell one part of the story, right? It's really how it applies on the eye. And that's what we're gonna get into. And also at the end of when I show you my two little eye looks, we're also gonna do some comparisons to other palettes that I have in my collection that you might have in your collection. And uh, we're gonna see who's the queen bee after all. But without further motherfucking ado, let's create some eye looks here. I. I'm low-key really excited. I'm really, really excited because I love this color story. I think it's a very, very beautiful, disgusting shades of baby shit. And I'm all about that. I really am. So seeing this palette, I immediately thought of Melt's 24. And that one sucked. It <laughs> Besides Melt having really, really um, psychotic, just unstable formula. <laughs> uh, I mean, seriously, I have palettes that are currently growing legs right now. One of the palettes likes to pick up hitchhikers, okay? Think about it. I try not to think about it right before I go to sleep every night. <sighs> Smoke Sessions is out there somewhere. Anyway, um, and then of course, the other palette that I have right now, Gemini 2, it has some weird things going on. Um, I featured it in my makeup bingo video. I thought it was mold. There's like a, a divide. Some say it's mold, some say it's wax. Either way, the palette looks like it belongs in the upside down. So either way, I'm not putting that anywhere near my fucking eyeballs, but I digress. Okay, so. What are we gonna do today, kids? Let's see. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm gonna start with the shade Fushi, which I wanna call it Frushi, but it's Fushi. It's Fushi. I'm just thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking of Epcot right now. I think they have Frushi. Do they have Frushi? I don't think they, no, not yet. It's not Frushi season quite yet. Anyway, I'm putting the shade a little bit above the crease. I'm going to probably throw this all over the lid as well. I have been having a lot more fun kind of doing that method, taking the shade that I really want more kind of above the crease area and just really throwing it all over the lid and then using a shade in the crease to uh, kind of give my look a little bit more dimension. I've been finding it a little bit easier for myself doing it that way, but you know, however the fuck you do your makeup, you do you, you know what I mean? I'm not here to judge. I am not a makeup artist, but at the end of the day, I'm a bitch that learns stuff on the internet, so. I like this color because it's like a nice um, macro and cheese color. <laughs> probably the best way that I could describe it. And honestly, it's such a pretty mustard yellow that I'm totally fine with pretty much just blending this out all over the lid, kind of making it a little bit softer towards the brow bone and just kind of being on my merry way. It's been weird because usually I'm a baby drag queen and I want like 75 fucking shades on the eyelid, but sometimes, just sometimes, I like to go less is more. And I think it's because I live in Florida now and it's so fucking hot here that I don't want to like take too much time doing my eyeshadow when I know it's just going to melt off my face anyway. By the way, the brush I used was the rougher number 15. Now I'm going to go in with the rougher number 13, which is my favorite brush. I'm going to go into the reddish shade. I think it's called Ixia. Probably not. I'm probably fucking that up. And I'm going to throw this in the crease and then softly, but ever so gently, work it up above the crease to build a very pretty gradient between the orangey color 
and the mustard color. And that's what I really like about this palette is that the colors from what I've experienced so far, I've been playing with this palette ever since it arrived to my house. I am not experiencing any sort of bits of muddiness. Everything really speaks on its own. And I love that I can create dimension without it looking like a muddy, patchy, shitty mess. So I'm liking how that's looking so far. I'm just gonna go back in with the one brush that I used with the mustard shade. Not taking any additional product, just using what I pretty much have left over. And so far so good. I'm just gonna deepen up the crease on this portion of my lid. As you can see, I have hooded eyes, so I have to always go a little bit above the crease if I wanna see any sort of color. Otherwise, I have to like walk around like this, and that's how I walk into walls. <laughs> like, do you not see the dimension now? Okay. <laughs> Anyway, today um, I'm doing this video. It's during the week. I have, ooh, I have a fucking meeting today at 1230. Let's see how many people notice that I have two different eye looks on. I'll leave a pinned comment down below to see if anybody says anything to me. I actually love when people do that at work because they don't outright say it. They usually message me on the side. I think just to have like a wellness check uh, <laughs> to be like, are you okay? Like you have two different eye looks. I'm like, yeah, I know. And they're like, okay. <laughs> they don't know that I do YouTube. <laughs> The people that ask me anyway, the people that do know I do YouTube, they're like, oh, what palette is that? I'm like, it's this one. They're like, any good? I'm like, eh. And they're like, oh, okay, thanks. I love it. Honestly, I'm kind of comfortable just doing this and just being on my merry way. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to add a nice little shimmer to it. Now, ooh, I kind of want to go in with this one. Plantasia. I think Plantasia is going to be where it's at. Yeah, I think Plantasia is going to be our winner here. That's definitely a green boy. Yeah, no, we're definitely doing Plantasia. I want to say Fantasia, but it's Plantasia. But before I do that, I'm going to go into the shade Calathea. Yeah, I'm going to go in with Calathea and a little bit of flax. Basically just like a green and brown moment. And I'm just going to gently place that in the outer lid, just a little bit. If I just put this all over the lid, I would be satisfied. I think there's some things to be said about like a nice brown green color with a little bit of orange and yellow that is so summery and just fiery and I don't know, like giving you see you next Tuesday energy. And I, lo I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Did I kind of go all over the lid with this? Yes, because I wanted to see if my theory was right. And bitch, my theory is right. This is everything that I want it to be and I kind of want to leave it as is. I honestly really enjoy the amount of looks that I have been able to create with this palette. Palette. been really really nice and it just goes to show that baby shit looks really really beautiful <laughs> now to make my life easier because i have hooded eyes i'm gonna go in with some nyx glitter glue i'm gonna let it shit out on my hand and then i'm gonna take a nice brush that i have just been obsessed with and it's from lethal cosmetics i don't know if it's meant to be a shimmer brush but it's so thin it is fucking amazing it's their 225 packing brush and if you are someone that has hooded eyes this is just a really good shape so I am just going to gently gonna tap this and blot this out all over the eyelid. This, if you have the gold palette, I feel like this is a very beautiful extension. And that is one of my favorite Natasha Denona palettes. That's the kind of palette that would be buried with me if I could. Um, which I mean, what am I saying if I could? Bitch, I'm gonna have a mausoleum. <laughs> It's gonna be basically a mini Sephora on top of my body. I love this shade, it's just so pretty. And it's so like warm and like kind of gross, but in the best way possible. It's like grungy, makes me think of uh, Rob Zombie movies, you know, although I hate his fucking movies. I think color wise, I really do enjoy them. It evokes a lot of emotion within me. Um, the content's terrible, but... <laughs> But I really do love a good like gold and yellow moment that's just so seedy. So this is giving me truck stop hooker and um, listen, I like it. <laughs> truck stop 70s hooker. Hmm. So I'm gonna take the same brush that I used the brown and green matte shade and just slightly kind of pounce over the edge of where that shimmer meets the matte to make it a little bit softer. And you know what? I'm obsessed. I'm in love. This is really, really cute and very, very sparkly. I'm a fan. So I want to take that um, Calathea shade and I'm going to line my top lash line. I need all the concentration in the world, so I'm going to shut the fuck up while I do this part. Also, I'm going to hope that I'm not getting any fallout. So far, there really hasn't been any fallout, with the exception of the Fushi shade. That one, there is a little remnants of yellow around the eyes, making me look a little jaundicey, but I don't mind it. We can clean that shit up. I'm going to go into the flax shade, which is that brown, because that green, green's a little bit light for my liking over the shimmer. 
Yeah, that looks a little bit better. I definitely needed the combination of the two because I felt like the green wasn't really doing anything. But it's one of those shades where you kind of have to build up that cream to matte formula, which I have to say I was never a fan of in the beginning, but I kind of slowly learned to love it. When using that shade, it is always like softer, I feel like. So it's something that you have to build up, but it's not the end of the world though. Now there is a little bit of fallout with the combination of those two. So that's just a heads up there. I'm hoping that's gonna be very, very easy to clean. So otherwise that's gonna suck. And that stuck in my face, okay. Mm, not the easiest to clean, but it's okay. Now there are eyeliners that were released with this formula and I'm very, very particular when it comes to my eyeliners. But one of the colors, I believe was like this orange color. It looks very, very similar to Melt Cosmetics Cultura. I think it's Cultura. This eyeliner, if you find this, this is fucking gold. This is going to be the only burnt kind of orange highlighter you will ever need in your life. Actually, I take that back. The one shade from Culfi, that's also really, really good as well. So if you can't find this one, then go with Culfi. But this one is just fantastic. I I, I fucking love this one. So I'm gonna put this in the waterline. It's funny because I didn't even know that they had any sort of liners because I immediately bought the palette and then I was like, oh, there was a whole collection. <laughs> LOL, oh well. I'm gonna take the Fushi shade and I'm going to blend that out bottom with the liner. Just make it a little bit softer. Super, super pretty. I like this shade. Again, it's that cream to matte formula. So I feel like there's a lot of wiggle room here in terms of like not making it super uber duper pigmented. Like you have to kind of build it up, especially when using like small detailed brushes. However, if you do use like a big fluffy brush, I feel like the pigmentation's there. It's kind of very funny how that works, but I'm really kind of happy that it's a little bit softer. It gives me time to blend in the product into that lower lash line. And I think it just looks really, really pretty. I'm just gonna take a clean fluffy brush and we're looking really, really cute. Now there's a shade um, called Camu Camu. It's just like really beautiful pale yellow. I'm gonna pop that in the inner corner. I'm gonna throw some mascara on and we'll be right back. So this is a completed first look. I love it. I'm gonna pop in some pictures right here. I'm obsessed, bitch. Um, and I could totally just be cool with this and just be on my merry way. But that's not gonna stop there. We're gonna do something else. We're gonna do something with the green side with this one. For this look, I'm gonna start with Citrine, which is this very beautiful baby shit color. I am obsessed with it. I love it. Honestly, again, it's just one of those shades where you can just put it all over the lid, blend it out, and it just looks impeccable. I also really love how pigmented this shade is. I don't know why I love these shades so much, but the girl this is the better place, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna take the shade next to that, which is Valley, which is a very beautiful warm tone brown shade. And I'm just going to just throw this in the crease. I love the combination of the two because it gives like such a nice, again, the word that I love using, dimension. Now I'm gonna take a refer brush. I think this is like the 22, but I've been using it so much that uh, I don't know the number anymore. <laughs> I just don't know. So I'm gonna take a little bit of NYX glitter glue because I'm just gonna let that shimmer shine. And we're going to be using uh, this one that I cannot pronounce, Kamorbi. Again, I apologize. I know I should be better at this. I'm not, whatever. <laughs> we're gonna be using that shade. It's too early in the morning to be learning words, okay? It's such a pretty gold color. It really, it really is. It's so, I know I wanted to kind of go with a little bit something green. I think I have to do the gold, I have to. Now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna take the Makaya shade, or Makia shade, and I'm gonna put that right in the back there. There is definitely, ooh, some chunky glitter fallout with that one. There is some Bukkake, so be aware. Again, not the easiest to clean, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna look like I fucked a disc. <laughs> I could look worse. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take the shade Willow, which is this very beautiful green color down here, and I'm going to place that in the outer corner. Sometimes I actually like putting the matte on top of the shimmer because it kind of just changes the vibe of it, right? So this one, which had like a twinge of like a dark kind of like dirty green money, kind of a yellowy color, now it has a little bit more green to its base. I think the green to the gold looks a little bit more seamless and better in my opinion, but I love doing that. But of course, when you do this though, there is a little bit of um, a rogue glitter bukkake situation. So just be mindful of that, okay? That's why I always think it's best when you're doing something like this, do it before you do your base. Do it before you do your base. But then again, if you're someone that likes that kind of wispy, very glittery, I fucked Tinkerbell kind of a look, then listen, you're gonna love this, okay? <laughs> but if you're someone that doesn't like a lot of glitter kind of floating around, you might not like it. But thankfully though, even though it is a little glittery, a lot of the glitter is pretty much kind of contained, so it doesn't feel like it's super all over the face, which is great. I think I'm happy where it's at right now. Now I do have a little bit of a situation underneath my eyes because I was going a little fast and loose there. 
But as you can see, most of that green definitely buffed away. And all that's left is the remnants of sparkle. Okay, you know what? Maybe I take that back. Uh, <laughs> the green definitely stayed. Uh, <laughs> it didn't look like it for a second, but no, no, no. No, 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 I, I look like I have cholera now. That's true, it it's a me thing, it was a me. I, I got a little fast and loose. Okay, let's try to clean this up. I'm gonna go back into the shade Willow and line my top lash line. For the waterline, I have something that you cannot get anymore. I'm sorry, but it's from Glossier Play. I've never found another mustard color to be as good as this. I baby the shit out of it. Um, It's old as fuck. <laughs> but it's something that I just cannot part with. You're gonna have to pry this out of my cold, dead fucking hands, okay? I'm never getting rid of it. I'm gonna take the shade Calathea, which is that dark green. We're just going to gingerly run that in the outer corner. I don't want it to be too much. I really, really appreciate that this formula is buildable. I don't know about you, but when sometimes I use like darker shades um, in the lower lash line, it can go from really cute to like, uh, uh somebody punch you in the fucking face. So I can appreciate that this is definitely softer. So I'm just gonna take clean that fluffy brush and just blend, blend, blend. Make it a little bit more softer. Definitely fucked a disco ball moment. Gross. Okay. I'm gonna put that same Camu Camu shade in the outer corner. We'd love a, a matching moment. <laughs> I'm gonna put some mascara on and then we're gonna talk about it. Here's the completed look. I know, I think the only thing I'm missing clearly is some lipstick. So, <laughs> so let's apply some lipstick together, kids. Hmm. Does this go? No. Do I just want to bring this out to show you? Yes. Everybody needs a pink cock in their life. You know what? I don't regret picking this up. This is everything I thought it was going to be. Okay. <laughs> anyway, here's a completed look. I know, I'm psychotic, I know. So for $69, is this palette worth it? And for me, it is. Definitely the pros outweigh the cons. So let's talk about the things that I don't like about the palette. First one being the cream to powder formula. I I have never really been a huge fan of the cream to powder formula. It's a lot of trial and error for me. Some palettes still fucking nail it and then some palettes I'm like, what is going on here? And for me, I feel like I have the tale of two cities with two of the cream to powder shades. So the first one is the Calathea one. The longevity is, is terrible. I love how it looks on the eye. I think it's so soft, it's beautiful, it's buildable, I love it. Longevity wise, it's dog shit. Like after a couple of hours, it's lifted, it's gone. I start to wonder if I should put it on a milk carton to try to find it. Like that's how bad it gets. But a shade like Fushi, Fushi, whatever, I like. I think it's actually really, really nice and it actually lasts. So I don't know if it's because it's a darker green, that's why it's not lasting or what the fucking deal is. But in any case, I really hate the fact that the longevity is really shitty. So for me, it's like I'm already kind of looking at a different palette just to kind of get that dark green to literally stay there for more than four hours. That is definitely the worst thing that I have to say about this palette. Then in terms of the color story, which I think is the most beautiful yet disgusting color story, <laughs> There are two shades here that are very, very similar. And when put on the eye, like you really can't tell the difference between the two. They look very much the fucking same. And because of that, it kind of begs the question, you know what, did you really need both of them? I don't really see the value of both of them. And that's just on me. It could totally work for somebody else, but on me, all I saw was the same fucking color. Granted, the color was beautiful, but it wasn't enough for me to be like, oh yeah, there's a definition between the two. I didn't see it. I guess the other con would be is that the fallout situation is not the best and it's a little difficult to clean but you know what honestly you can remedy that by just doing your eye makeup first and then your base so it's not like the worst con in the world I feel like that's usually the case with a lot of palettes but it's just something to know if you're somebody that really doesn't like a lot of fallout this could be a little bit difficult to clean also the glitter bukkake is fucking intense it's intense I look like I fucked Tinkerbell we had a thing going <laughs> And obviously she um, liked or didn't like, I don't know, maybe she did like because she exploded. That's disgusting. I'm so sorry I even said that. Anyway, uh, point <laughs> I need to leave the internet. Yeah, I would say that's probably the biggest con right now is that I have a lot of sparkle all over my face. And uh, thank God it's Zoom today, but I'm basically cosplaying as a, a fucking Twilight vampire. Okay, that's how I feel right now. Beyond that, the things that I love about this palette. One, first of all, the packaging. The packaging is absolutely gorgeous and stunning and it's everything that I wanted to be. I like that you get a mirror. The mirror is great quality. Any of the mirrors in these palettes are fucking perfect. And I know it's like so stupid to say like, oh, the mirror is like something that's really good. But can I tell you a, a palette that literally sits like this and that doesn't have that floppy fucking mirror it is such a big deal it really is especially if you're traveling like this is fucking perfect now when it comes to the color story i'm obsessed like i said this is the most beautiful and disgusting 
color story I've ever seen. It is baby diarrhea personified and I'm all about it. Now I know not everybody looks good in these colors and for that I think that's a very big thing to think about. If these colors do not work for your face don't fucking buy this palette clearly obviously but if you are known to be wearing these kind of colors or have liked these colors in the past and they've not made you look like you've had cholera then fucking play ball all right <laughs> go forth babies go pick this up because it's definitely worth checking out now there are a lot of comments that i've seen that people were asking like oh what's the difference between this one or say the nomad okavango uh safari palette which i'm gonna throw some stuff up here i have to say you know there's definitely some overlap with some of the shades i could see kind of like the oranges and maybe one of the green colors but the natasha denona palette is very warm feeling right while the nomad one is kind of a mixture of both. You have a little bit of cool, you have a little bit of warmth. In terms of quality, I think they're both really, really good. I feel like I am going to gravitate towards the Natasha Denona palette though, only because my biggest kind of complaint with this one is that the shimmers on these have a little bit of a texture. Some of them kind of hit hard pan a little bit, and the ones I'm talking about are obviously like the little swirled animal print ones. Well, very, very pretty, and they still do work. It's just they're kind of a little bit more of a pain in the ass in comparison to these shimmers that are very buttery and smooth and easy to apply, right? It's funny with this one specifically, I think even one of the shimmer shades, um, it felt a little splotchy in the beginning and I had to really like build it up. But in comparison to this, like these like went on like butter. So all that to say, I definitely think the shimmers in this totally beat this palette. I'm happy that I have it. I'll still use it, but I prefer the formula of this one. Now this definitely is a companion piece to the gold palette for sure. I love the gold palette. I love it so fucking much. I've had this for a very long time. This is going to be buried with me because I just love how beautiful and just ethereal and slutty I look when I wear these gold shades. And I definitely think that the Yucca palette, or the Yucca palette as I want to call it, is definitely a nice extension of the gold palette. So, so if you do have the gold palette, this would be a very, very beautiful, albeit expensive, companion piece. I saw a couple of comments saying that the Lemoncello palette was a little bit similar to that. And you know what? Um, this is, first of all, this is like one of my favorite ColourPop palettes. It's, it's fucking wonderful. I don't know if they actually make it anymore. This is my one of my favorite neutral palettes though to, that have ever existed. I think in comparison, yeah, there is some color overlap, but at the end of the day, they feel like kissing cousins. Yes, there is some resemblance, but you can tell that they have completely different mothers and fathers. <laughs> but they still like to make out. That's disgusting. All right, uh, what's another palette I thought of? Oh, palette that I don't even own anymore because I decluttered it because the quality kind of got a little bit weird for me. But it's from Colored Rain, the Safari palette. It looks very, very similar. Obviously when it comes to quality, I'm gonna choose Natasha Denona because I got rid of the Safari palette. I think at the time it was fine and then over time it stopped being fine. <laughs> and that's why it went away. <laughs> Like I wasn't really using it that much and it just, I remember some of the shades having a little bit of a, a difficulty using, a little patchiness going on. So anyway, another palette I thought of um, actually is the Be Perfect Carnival palette. And I know this palette has 90,000 fucking shades, but if you kind of really focus more on this part of the palette and maybe like a one or two shades on this side, you could see that there are some similarities there. So maybe if you do have this large palette, do you really need to get something like this? Yeah, probably not. So definitely obviously look into your collection. You definitely don't need to have it because this palette is really, really great. I think I've only experienced maybe one or two shades that were kind of like eh, kind of weird but for the most part I've always found this palette to be really really fun to use the only thing that I don't like about it is that is every fucking shade in the world and because of that I often feel overwhelmed uh, <laughs> when using it so that's just the heads up there this is definitely a tighter color story a tighter edit that I appreciate and then last but not least I thought about I feel like it's kind of a little bit weird but follow me if you're on a budget profusion makes these really beautiful palettes that I have talked about in the past but when looking at the yucca palette not every shade is like a straight up you know match or whatever you can kind of get away with like an inspired by palette by using these two so this is the citrine and this is the emerald palette I feel like using those two palettes have that inspired by the yucca palette moment so anyway those those are two fabulous palettes as well. So if you kind of want some of these colors, but you just don't want to pay $69 for, which listen, I don't fucking blame you. I say those are some good options as well. I also thought about the Gemini palette a little bit too, only because there's like maybe a couple of shades here and there that kind of match the energy of this, but not like the overall feeling of it. Melt, I think this is the only good melt palette that <laughs> that I have. Um, I say go get the eyeliner. <laughs> 
Maybe not so much the fucking German High palette. In any case, I'm happy that I picked this up. I didn't get this in PR or whatever. I spent my hard earned money on it. I feel very, very satisfied with it. This is a palette that I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of use out of because I see a lot of possibilities or possibilities as I like to say. There's a lot of good range. It's a lot of shades that I feel super comfortable with just using one eyeshadow, which I feel like is a new realm for me because like I've said in the past, I always like turning myself into a baby drag queen. But lately I just want more simplicity in my life. And so when I look at this, I really see a lot of possibility because some of the shadows just look beautiful on their own. And mixed with my beautiful blue eyes, <laughs> It's a fucking no-brainer. I'm gonna look beautiful every time. I like this palette so much so that if I ever hit pan <laughs> and I laugh because I own a thousand and one palettes, this is something that I would repurchase again. Because not only one is this fucking beautiful to look at, but it's actually a lot of fun to use. So I love palettes that when I put on immediately, I want to take off because I want to keep playing with it and exploring with it. And that's the vibe that I get with this palette is that I love the looks that I created and I've created quite a few different looks. Unfortunately, looks that I didn't film because I just wanted to like play with the palette and get to know the palette, take it on a coffee date for a little bit, okay? Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. Point is, I really, really do enjoy it and it's a lot of fun to play with. And I definitely think if you're interested to check it out, you should do so. If you wanna pay for it full price, I definitely think that you will get your money's worth for sure. However, if you have some Ulta points that you want to cash in, this is definitely a really, really good item to splurge on with said points. Or if you want to wait for the next Sephora sale, which probably won't be until usually what, the fall now? So I don't know if this is a limited edition release. I do apologize. I, I don't know off the top of my head if this is a limited edition release. So if it is, I say use those Ulta points. Plus Ulta has a better system anyway. Fuck Sephora, just saying. <laughs> Yeah, those are my thoughts. I really, really like this. I'm actually really quite fucking impressed how much I like this palette and it's literally blowing my mind all over my face. So thanks Natasha Denona. Thank you for making something that I'm not, you know, yelling about. That's kind of nice. Although I know people like when I yell. I do too, but it's always nice to feel like I didn't waste my money. <laughs> Anyway, now I wanna hear from y'all. Let me know down below if you did pick up this palette or if you've been waiting for this palette or if this is something that you'd pick up on sale, let me know, because I love hearing from you. And of course, if there's something else that you wanna see me review, let me know down below. I'd love to do it for you. And with that said, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Instagram. And to my beautiful, wonderful YouTube members and patrons, thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, really filthy, really gross, really nasty, actually. Garbage boat afloat. Couldn't do without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces. And I just want to gobble you all up so you can live inside my belly and we can be one. If I remember what else I had on my base today, I will definitely leave it in the description box down below. If not, it's a mystery. <laughs> And I apologize for that. And of course, any of the palettes that I kind of talked about or compared it to or, or whatnot, if they are still available, I will link those down uh, below as well. And I'll see you little pumpkins on Friday. Bye.